Welcome to the Black Girls Heal podcast, where we talk about changing unavailable relationship patterns, healing unresolved trauma, and building a healthy relationship with first you and then others. Every episode, we will talk about actionable advice that you can apply today to break unhealthy patterns and grow your self-worth. I'm Sheena Tubbs. Let's begin. A happy and healthy day to you. Welcome to the latest episode of Black Girls Heal. I am so happy to have you here. So this week, we are going to be digging into the importance of forgiving yourself. And so last week, I talked about three traps that we fall into when we are forgiving other people. And um, I gave a quick little overview of the most common things that people say when they're talking about forgiveness. So if that is something that would be helpful for you to hear, you can go ahead and check that episode out, episode 22. But today we are talking about self-forgiveness. I want to give a shout out to everyone who tagged me on social media and let me know that you really enjoyed last week's episode. And if you commented as well, um, that feedback is always so helpful um, and also feels good because I put these things out because I want to help us as a community heal and move forward. I want to help us learn how to connect better to ourselves and then better to others as well. So I love hearing that. And also words of affirmation is my love language. So I can just soak it all up. So speaking of words of affirmation, I am going to share a listener review from iTunes. So I've talked to you before. And if you listen to podcasts, you already know this, how important it is to have reviews because it helps other people find it. And I haven't been reading the reviews um, lately because the podcasts have been very announcement heavy because I've had a lot of things coming out. And so now it's a little slow time. Um, as I prep for all the really great things that are coming out for you this holiday season, which is going to be perfect because of all of the triggers and things that happen around the holidays for a lot of us, um, cuffing season, and especially those of us who are single or those of us who are in relationships that are tumultuous, conflictual, distant, whatever it may be, like we may really, really be needing something to, Um, hold on to, or even if none of those things are happening and we are just like getting ready for the new year, we are all about self-improvement. Y'all, the things I have coming up, you are going to love. Um, But in the meantime, I really want to appreciate or say thank you for everyone who has left reviews. Um, It's so great to read them. And I'm going to read this one from rlove0231. She says, I've been in therapy for over a year and thankfully my therapist has got to the root of my issues, but the healing has been incredibly slow because there was no real roadmap on how to heal. I'm aware of my issues now, but it's been a true lonely journey of trial and error on healing. Sheena's Tubbs podcast has been a blessing I never knew I needed. She has shed light on how deep your childhood slash family dynamics affect all of your relationship and your life. I can't wait to sign up for her Thrive program. She is truly a game changer, and I'm excited to continue my healing journey with her teachings. She is truly compassionate and transparent. Thank you, Sheena. I'm in tears. You are a true blessing girl. So our love, I don't know your real name, but I'm assuming you're on my mailing list. And I want you to personally email me. Um, and I just want us to have a love fest that way, but thank you so much for these really beautiful words. So, um, before we get into the podcast episode, I am going to share one topic or one thing that I am working on because I want y'all to get ready. So remember a few episodes ago, I talked about how the thrive program is built to be all encompassing. If you are a new listener, the Thrive Program is the signature offer of Black Girls Heal. So if you're asking, how do I work on these things? How do I move forward? How do I go deeper? How do I get coaching from you? Learn to Thrive, our group coaching program is that way. It's six months. Um, There's weekly group coaching calls. There is a full system um, that helps break down a whole list of things I'm not going to to get too deep into, but everything from how to connect to ourselves, how to connect to other people in a healthy way, boundaries, self-affirmation, self-love, validation, building um, a healthy foundation, actually going to no contact with people who are unhealthy for us, all that stuff. But a few weeks ago, a few episodes ago, I talked about how for some of us, we're not wanting to really 
do the relationship part too. Some people are attracted to the Black Girls Heal community because they want to feel, they want to heal that sense of feeling not enough, that nagging ache, um, that kind of um, lonely, achy feeling on the inside that comes as a result of childhood trauma, being codependent, um, not knowing how to connect to other people, not knowing how to love yourself. And I said, I've been thinking a lot about that and wanting to um, maybe have an offering for people where that is where you're at. Um, and then maybe if you wanted to join us in the bigger community, then um, you can do that. And it's coming, y'all. Or should I say it's here? but it's coming to where you can join me. And that offering is called the Healed and Loved Woman. And, you know, this was the name of the retreat. And I remember when I thought of the name, I was thinking, how is it that I want every woman to feel when they are done with this experience? What do I want them to um, take away from it? What is the promise that I'm giving each and every one of you who attend. And it is to be healed and to feel loved, right? But you're, because you're already loved, but for you to know how and to feel love within yourself. And so um, after I closed the doors to the retreat and I was thinking, okay, how can I make this experience open for everyone, um, even if they cannot come in real life? And so we are going to have the healed and loved woman be an experience for any woman who wants to join and learn how to go deeper in these concepts to have that promise of feeling healed and loved on the other end. And I'm going to be sharing more details about it later on. Um, I'm actually kind of breaking my rule now by sharing it today because when this episode comes out, it's going to be the end of October. Um, and I told myself I wasn't saying anything until like November ish around Thanksgiving and y'all, I just, I can't, um, I, I convinced myself that it is best to give y'all notice so that, you know, when things are coming and that is real feedback that I've gotten, um, to have more notice when, um, doors are opening for programs and to kind of hear more about what's going on so that everyone can have a chance to prepare, especially if you're like me and you get like really behind on all the people that you follow. Like I love podcasts and I have at least eight to nine of some of my favorite ones just in the queue that I have to listen to because life is different now. Life is busy and I don't have a commute anymore because I work from home and so just figuring out times. And so my long way of saying, I want to have as many touch points where I'm telling you about what's going on so that one, everybody can hear, two, everybody can be prepared, and three, you can get excited. So as time goes on, I'll be sharing more about um, this program, um, what it will look like, and when the doors will be opening. Um, they will be opening in December, um, beginning of December. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. I got to stop. I got to stop. Okay. So let's get into this podcast episode, which is all about the importance of self-forgiveness, which is so fitting talking about being a healed and loved woman. So a comment that a lot of people can relate to, um, and if you are not one of those people, God bless you, but that is not me. <laughs> but I am one of the people that can also relate to the following statement of sometimes our biggest critic is ourself, right? Um, sometimes we don't have to worry about what other people can say because we are the ones who will um, do more emotional or verbal mental self-harm on ourselves than anybody else can give us. And even if someone does say something negative that is, that is hurtful, we're the ones that take that comment, take that statement and kind of drill it in on replay. If we do not have the right tools, um, healing, self-love, um, ability to take those thoughts, take those experiences and turn them around, we can just kind of add it to our own personal arsenal. And one of the ways that we can be self-critical on ourselves is not practicing forgiveness on ourselves. So this is when we will hold grudges against us, where we will hold judgments on things that we've done, things that we think we should have done, um, things we think we should have said, times we thought we should have been wiser or smarter or known better or whatever it may be. 
Um, we don't forgive ourselves for basically being human. Um, and then what's interesting is, you know, a lot of times when I'll make the statement, forgive you for being human, you know, when you're talking about someone else and forgiving them for being human, for some of us, that's kind of a very easy thing to do. You know, that's the advice that we'll give our best friend. You know, it's okay for you to make a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes, that kind of stuff. But then when some, someone tells that to you, it's okay for you to not be perfect. It, it can be very frustrating. It can feel very invalidating. It can feel um, nonsensical um, because that applies to everybody else but you. Like the, yeah, but like, this is so ridiculous. This is so stupid. I'm so foolish, whatever it is. And then you add all those things on top of it. And so when we fail to forgive ourselves, it can cause us to continue to be hurt by unresolved pain. So not only could we still, or do we still stay in the same emotional state of whatever happened that hurt us, you know, whatever the mistake whatever the situation, whatever the event was that actually hurt us, we feel those feelings. And then we feel the shame of not being enough of being again, enter and whatever negative thought you have about yourself. We add that on top of the original pain. And so we just continue to suffer. And then we get mad at ourselves that we're suffering, right? When we do not forgive ourselves, um, it contributes to low self-esteem and low self-worth, right? So we can be overly defensive in our relationships or distance because, you know, we already don't feel enough. We already feel bad about ourselves. So it could be hard for us to want to show that part of us or show our full selves to someone because we are ashamed or afraid that they're going to see what we think we know to be true about ourselves or what we think is is true about ourselves. Um, so there's a, a part of us that may still be closed off or maybe we're completely closed off. Or, you know, to go back to the description I was saying at the beginning with being overly defensive, you know, because we haven't forgiven ourselves for things that we've done in the past, um, anytime someone mentions something about it, then we can feel very, very triggered by it, right? So if I have guilt that I would always go ghost in relationships with my friends whenever I was in a relationship, and maybe that's something I'm really working on now to stay present, to not go away. Anytime someone makes a joke about, oh, there goes Sheena, you know how she is when she gets a boyfriend. I could get very upset about that because, you know, you don't see that I'm trying, you don't see that. I, um, I'm different now and that's because I still carry my own shame and I still don't forgive myself for what I perceive to be mistakes, um, in my past. A lot of times with this low self-esteem and self-worth, you know, the guilt that we feel is really unnecessary. Um, it's things that even if they were originally hurtful to the other person or to ourselves, um, they are healable. Um, maybe the other person has even moved on, um, but we have it right. And it wears us down. And then, you know, what happens when we don't love ourselves or feel good enough, that is when we start to be self-destructive. And again, like I've talked about at other places in this podcast, you know, the scale of what self-destruction or, um, the ways that our acting out behaviors look like, um, there's a spectrum, right? So some of us, you know, People can look at us and we can look at ourselves and it's, we're clearly in a hot mess, right? Like we're clearly like abandoning ourselves. We don't treat ourselves well. We are in a whole lot of chaos and like it's something that everybody can see. And some other ones of us, we are self-destructive, but in maybe some really covert ways. So ways that may be socially acceptable to other people. So I think about people who may be in very high power um, positions and, and cultures where self-destructive behaviors are like, like not even given a second thought. So I'm thinking about lawyers, C-suite, executives, like these high power, high energy, high, depending on your crowd, depending on how you self medicate depending on what you do, you could act out more in those areas and no one ever bats an eye. You know, you are really great with your clients and you're great at landing those accounts. And maybe you drink a little bit more than, um, than you need to, but it's a comfort to you and it's helping you do your job well. Right. I've talked often about avoidant behaviors as well. So you know, we're at a time, we're at a place where we feel very low about ourselves. And what we really, really need more than anything is for someone else to be around us, for someone else to be present. But we make excuses on why we can't hang out with people, why we can't be around them. Um, and we isolate. 
And so that's a self-destructive behavior that makes us feel alone, makes us feel like no one really understands us. And then we push people away that reinforces our reality. So we look around, there's nobody around us, right? And then maybe we reach out to someone to like be there for us. But because we don't know how to pick a healthy person yet, we reach out to a friend that's toxic or flaky or unavailable, or maybe they are available, but they're not available right at that moment. And we go straight into our, no one loves me. I'm a burden. See, this is why I don't reach out to other people. And um, we go into our shell again. So that part is a little bit of a tangent, but still related to our low self-esteem and low self-worth. You know, we kind of create this reality around us of why we um, don't deserve forgiveness or why um, it could be feel very impossible. So here are some things that I want you to know if you relate to any of that, all of that, 10% of that, none of that, but you know, a friend who needs it, this is what I want you to know. I'm going to repeat something I said earlier in my description because it is the core, it is the key, it is the most important. You are allowed to make mistakes. Making mistakes is a part of life. It's not a part of life that other people do, but you don't do. It's not a part of life that other people do, but you fail better than they do. You know, some of us come from a place where we have to feel the way that we feel good enough is to know that we have something, we have something on other people, right? That the ways that we do things is a little bit better than what other people do. And that's where we get our control and our self-worth. You know, perfectionism has a whole lot of ego in that, right? Perfectionism has a whole lot of pride that says that maybe other people can fail, but not me because I am better than that, or I can be better than that. And being a perfectionist is different than striving for excellence. Because when you strive for excellence, all that requires is that you do your best effort. And if your best effort has a typo or two, then that is okay because you did your best. You know, some of us do not give ourselves learning curves. In relationships, so that part is mostly for, those examples are more for like tangible, like work products or like projects that we do on our own. You know, I've I've worked with a lot of people who are artists and they'll talk about how they feel like they can't create because they feel like it has to look or be a certain way. And a lot of our work was just paint, create, make what is inside of you right now, because that's what needs to get out. Right. And then once they allow themselves to just be where they were in the moment, magic happened and they were freed. So when it comes to making mistakes in relationships, you know, we can carry a lot of shame and guilt because we could feel like we are the ones who broke somebody else. We can feel like it is our responsibility to take care of and be there for other people in a certain way. We hold ourselves often to higher standards than we hold other people. And what's underlying a lot of this is that fear of being abandoned, that fear of being rejected, right? So if I don't forgive myself, I can abandon me and I can reject me before you get a chance to. It's almost like this self-protection. Well, it's not almost, it is. It's this self-protection deflection thing, right? I'll, I'll punish me. I'll hit me enough so that you don't have to hit me too. And what I want to do for you through this podcast is I want to lovingly grab your hands to grab your fists. I want to hold them in my hands, bring them down, look you deep in your eyes and tell you that you don't have to hurt yourself at all. That no matter what you've done, no matter what you have said, no matter what mistake you have made for the upteenth time, no matter what promises you are broken, you are good enough. Jamila, you are good enough. Dina, you are good enough. Toya, you are good enough. Nikita, Maddie, Whoever is listening right now, and these are just names that are coming to mind. So that's you. Awesome. But you, as you are, flaws and all are perfectly imperfect. And that is not a pit stop for you to one day become perfect, right? It's not like, yeah, I'm perfectly imperfect right now, but like one day, you know, the key to self-love, I feel like I give a lot of keys to self-love, but here's what key number 44 Um, Key number 44 (laughs) to self-love is being able to look at yourself with loving, compassion, and acceptance. 
no matter what state you're in, whether you're celebrating or whether you're learning from a mistake or a failure, right? That you know that your worth and value is steady no matter what. And you know that you are just as deserving of grace and forgiveness as the person next to you, right? And out of all the people in the world that you need to give grace and compassion to the most, it's you. You are your most important relationship. How you love you is your most important relationship. So, you know, this is more the stuff that we're going to talk about in the Healed and Loved Woman um, course. We're going to go real deep. We're going to talk about um, even more about where this comes from. We're going to talk about how to walk through it, how to talk to yourself in a different way, how to actually break down the self-compassion in a way that's um, tangible and real. But for you right now, I need you to know and repeat it back to yourself. I am lovable. Go ahead and do it right now. I'm not joking. Wherever you are, in your car, on the treadmill, cleaning your room, rocking your baby, I am lovable. Under your breath at your cubicle, I am lovable. And now that you've said that, throughout this podcast, there are probably some things that have come to mind that you need to forgive yourself for. And so that, that is what I want you to do now. Say, I forgive myself for fill in the blank. You know, me as a new mom, I'm very aware of always feeling like there's not enough time, right? There's not enough time to like do all the things. And did I answer the cry quick enough? Or did I um, give him the right response whenever he needed something? So I forgive myself for fill in the blank, whatever it might be for you. I forgive myself for being the flaky friend. I forgive myself for not responding to texts quick enough. Y'all, you shaming yourself and you telling yourself, man, I suck as a friend and I do all that. Has that ever helped you make real lasting change? That might have guilted you into making a temporary change or shamed you into making a change, but it's never been long lasting. And a lot of us are carrying around this critical voice that is not ours. It's from our past, right? Voices in our past would motivate us by shitting on us. By being a negative, and you are not going to be that next voice. So you have in mind the thing that you have said out loud that you forgive yourself about. Don't say it in your head, y'all. When you just do things in your head, they just go there and they just disappear, right? Nothing changes in your reality when you just say it in your head. That's why people say when you do affirmations, you need to say them out loud. Bonus points if you say it to yourself in the mirror and you can look at yourself. But conversation for another day. So you've already said what you are going to, or what you are currently forgiving yourself about something I didn't mention last week when I was giving my overview of things that people really, um, repeat often about forgiveness is that, um, sometimes forgiveness takes a while. It takes you forgiving the person over and over and over and over again. Right? So you, it's a choice to forgive. And so some of you have just, said you forgive yourself. Some of you might even be tearful or emotional or like it could feel like very powerful for you right now. And like you feel a release. Some of you may still feel, feel very stuck. Some of you may um, feel some relief, but still feel some sadness and shame around it. And wherever you are, that's okay. That just means that you need to continue to teach yourself how to forgive yourself. This is a muscle. Self-love is a muscle y'all. Unfortunately, it's a muscle that we have to build because we did not get the opportunity. Many of us, if you're listening to this podcast, you did not get that opportunity to learn how to, to do it yourself because it wasn't taught to you. And it wasn't taught to you because you have parents or caregivers who didn't quite know how to do it themselves and God bless them, you know, um, but, and they did their best. So we are the generational, um, blessings that are coming to break those curses, right? We are coming to break those bonds and we're going to do differently with ourselves and differently with other people. And we're going to start by learning how to forgive ourselves and being kind to ourselves, right? And there was a collective, right? There was a collective amen on the other side of the world, right? So as much as you can, as loud as you can, as often as you can, 
I forgive myself for fill in the blank. Okay. So the healed and loved woman is only one way that, um, we are helping you and we are getting you ready to having your best year in 2020. So, um, we are going to have a free challenge for everyone called the my year of me challenge. Um, people always talk about taking a year off, especially when they're talking about healing and recovering, especially from like relationship issues, um, or just like wanting to like get closer and get to know themselves. And so, yeah, we are going to help frame your year of you to make it be the most effective and productive ever. So if you would like to join that challenge, you can go to myyearofme.com and join us there. As I've said in other podcast episodes, you will only be on the list for, for that challenge. You won't be added to my weekly mailing list. If you're already on my mailing list, you will continue to get emails. If you have been on my mailing list, but you haven't gotten any in a while, um, this week, actually, you should have started getting more emails as we get ready for the holidays. I'm prepping you with a lot of really great information and tips to help you be prepared. Um, and again, have that comfort that we need. So there's that. If you're super excited about this healed and loved woman course that is coming, you can go to the healed and loved woman.com and add your name to the wait list there to be the first to know, um, when the doors open. Um, and we are going to have so much fun. I can't wait to share more with you about that. Everybody else. Um, if you're not already a part of our free Facebook group, would love to have you be a member there. You can go to blackgirlsheal.org slash group and answer the three questions so that you can be accepted. Um, in that group, we just have a lot of discussion questions about a lot of the things that we talk about here. Um, it is a guided group in that all the posts are, um, or all the threads are curated and picked based on things that people have shared that they want to talk about or questions that they have. And then if you enjoy this episode, um, would love to have you tag me on Instagram at black girls heal underscore. And I would love specifically for this week. If you feel comfortable sharing what it is that you have forgiven yourself for small or big, right? And if you don't feel comfortable sharing what it is that you forgive yourself for, but just, you want to let me know that this episode has been helpful and transformational. Like I said, I love those words of affirmation would love to be tagged in that on your IG story. So that I know who in our community is truly being helped. So that is it for this episode. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you in the next one.